when I first came out here, my mans was running this spot, but he connected me with some niggas from right here, you feel me, who I got real close with after that. And I started there, you know what I'm saying? And one day, the old head from 7th Street came over here looking for my boy. And my boy was just like, he told me to come move in with him. He was like, I'm gonna show you what real money look like, you feel me? Go pack your stuff in your mom crib. Come up, come up here, you're gonna live with me. So right then and there, I just moved, you feel me? I, I packed my shit. And I said, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta take care of my son somehow, you feel me? He couldn't eat nothing. And with me having a theft record for me being in college and shit, they, that, that shit ruined my life pretty much. I'm hustling to survive. I'm hustling to feed my child. But I'm just dying and fighting just to live a good life, you know what I'm saying? Pardon me, this is where we started. This alleyway right here, this is 7th York. This alleyway used to not be blocked off. We used to be, it enters into like a T and it goes back this way. You feel me? We used to be there every day, every day, working. Have lookouts right here on the corner. I got this, I got this corner store tattooed on my back. In the A is all Philly stuff. I got Liberty One, Liberty Two. You feel me? The air, air, the airplane represents the airport. The girls represent the clubs and shit, cause everything's in Philly. You feel me? Then it got the train. You feel me? And then in the O is this corner store right here. You feel me? Seventh Street corner store. It got the river line, the river shorts, all like it just represents represents Camden. You feel me? Represents where I went. In the city hall in Camden with the Philly skyline behind it. You feel me? It says CMD under here. Then right here, it's not finished yet. It's the Philly City Hall. It says Philly right here. And up here it's gonna say a tale of two cities because I'm from Philly, but I came out here and did what I had to do. I started catching a train up here from Philly because I was living in Philly at the time. That's where I'm originally from. I started catching the train out here and he would pick me up from the train station. I ended up fucking with some girl before that though, my, my, my daughter's mother. I started fucking with her and she was letting me stay in her crib downtown. So he told me, he's like, bro, you might as well like really wife her. I can see you like her, you feel me? Might as well wife her so you can stay out here. You can stay where she stay at because she let you stay with her. So I started staying with her, and that was before I started living with C in, in the Fourth and Pine crib, you feel me? You feel me? I'm making my name for myself. It says Blockstar. So from Fourth and Royden, we made it at we made it out seven for York. You know what I'm saying? Seven for York is one of the most prestigious blocks in the history of this hood. Look at that, bro. You see that, bro? It's a seven, you feel me? 7th Street, where we from, you feel me? North side. That was also the get to to run. When it was time, when the cops ran down, they could go in there and act like we ordered food real fast, you feel me? ASAP. Ruthie's made so much money off of us, everybody out here was hustling, you feel me? Ruthie's would just get all the bread. And this is Fourth and Pine, this is Seat's house. I didn't even know what downtown was at the time. When I came out here, my boy, my boy was like, yo, uh, meet me downtown. I had the GPS to shit. I ain't know nothing about Camden like that. I had been in Camden before, but out like east and shit, and I ain't know nothing about it. So when he told me come downtown, he gave me an address, I GPS it, I finally found it. As I was chilling with him, I kept watching him pick up bread, stacks of money, huge stacks of money from all over the place. And I'm looking at him like, damn, this nigga really getting money, you feel me? Mind you, I'm around broke. Uh, my son can't eat nothing. He can't drink nothing. So I started talking to him. I'm like, yo, listen, man, I need to get this money too. He, 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 all, all, first words out of his mouth, he's like, bro, you want to get this money? You got to be out here. Feel me? All my tattoos represent me, you know what I'm saying? They represent everything that I've been through, struggle, where I'm from, all that shit, you feel me? It's a gunplay for obvious reasons, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, right here 
It says dying to live because we all living to die. You feel me? Everybody's going to die. Everybody wants to. It, it, it's, it's inevitable. You're going to die. You feel me? The car was literally right here. You feel me? The car was parked pretty much like a little bit farther than my truck is at. So when, when I seen all of them, I said, fuck no, I'm not going to the house because I live two blocks down. So I made this left. When I came back around, now I'm doing a whole circle around the park. When I come, I came that way, they all, I started looking at my review, they all started pulling off, pulling off, reversing, K-turns, all that shit. I got to the corner store by the time they pulled me over. This is where they pulled my car over, right here, to run down on me. Right here at this corner store. I knew there was cameras there. I knew that they was, they was not going to do what they were supposed to do legally, so I was on it already. I was coming. When I was here, they put me in a cop car. I was sitting this direction. I came from this direction. While I was sitting in the cop car, they said, all right, take him to his house. My heart dropped when I see, I heard him say that. Took me back over here. They took me back to my crib, and then that's when all the shit happened. They started bringing it out. They started threatening my girl and all that, and everything that just kept flashing in my mind was like, my girl, my kids, like I, everything that I've done it for, they're about to take everything from me again. They were already in the house. They were already in there. So now I'm watching them start coming out with stuff. And I'm like, oh shit, man, shit done hit the fan. The investigator comes out, he walks up to the cop car, and he goes, he goes, well, we know this ain't your crib. We know this your baby mom's house. We know you don't have ties. To, we know you stay here, but we know you don't have ties to it. So who's getting the blame on this? Who we locking up? You or your baby mom? I looked him dead in his face and said, you ain't putting no fucking handcuffs on my baby mom. All that shit is mine. Like, that my bell was at 400,000 when I walked in them doors. And I was like, man, there's no way I could pop that. They weren't even putting no bond on it. They wasn't putting shit on it. So when I was looking, I was like, man, I'm never going to get home. You feel me? I went to that first court, that for video court. He was like, dropped it down to 100,000. I was like, thank God. You feel me? And I had put money down on a Rolex. Like, for me, it was going to be a Rolex. It's like a hood trophy. You feel me? Like, when you got the Rolex, everybody like, like you feel like you made it, like you did something in this city, you feel me? Like it, to me, that like the Rolex meant everything. So when I put the money down on it, the luckily my jeweler was cool with us, you feel me? So she went over there, she was like, listen, my, my, my husband's locked up, I need that bread back to go get him. She, she, he was like, all right, well, I'll give you some of it. She came and got me, when I came home, you feel me? The house was ripped to shreds still. She didn't even want to stay there. She was staying at her mom's house, everything. Everything was, it was like, I felt so alone, so violated. So like they came in and tore up my whole house down. They first offered me a five with a three and a half immediately at a pick hearing. So five with a three and a half, I'm like, all right, well I could deal with that. You feel me? But I didn't want to take it just then because I didn't have nothing set up to make sure she was going to be good, to make sure my kids was going to be good. So as the case went on, the numbers went up. It went to five with a five. Then I got new, it went, I went through three different prosecutors. One prosecutor was pregnant, another prosecutor left, another, then I'm, now I got a third prosecutor, you feel me? And at this point, a year has gone by, damn near a year and a half, and I'm like, you know what, I'm ready to take a deal, I wanna get this shit over with, you feel me? First I told her, give me a five with a three and a half. You give me a five with a three and a half, I sign right now, I go do my time, I go home. She was like, I'm not giving you no five with a three and a half, I'm like, you already offered me that. She was like, I didn't offer you that. I'm not gonna offer you that. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? You already offered me that. So I'm telling my lawyer, like, they offered me that. I was like, all right, well, fine. Let me get a five with a five. She's like, no, seven with a five, seven with a five, seven with a five. She kept shoving it down my throat. She brought me back to court three times, telling me seven with a five. And I'm like, I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that. Because at the end of the day, I started thinking about it. I'm like, I know my rights. I looked at my lawyer in the face. I said, that safe can get thrown out. I kept telling him, that safe can get thrown out. They went in there illegally. If you're not locking up all parties involved, how you know that's not my girl's safe? You can't just break into the safe without a judge's say so, no matter if you got a search warrant or not. I spread out all my paperwork. Mind you, she's looking at all the tattoos. She's looking at me like I'm a fucking retard, like I'm just some hoodlum running around, like I'm some thug. This and he think he's smart. He think he's gonna get some shit off. This and this and that. And I was like, man, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna respond because when I get this safe thrown out, then I'll be like, oh well, fuck you, bitch, and do all that. You feel me? So she sets my court date for September 29th. Me and my wife are no longer together, you feel me? So I'm already hurt. Everything's just going bad for me at the time, you feel me? And it's just like, 
a lot of a lot of depression, a lot of stressing and shit like that. I'm sitting in court. I'm stressing. I'm looking. I'm like, damn, man, I hope they throw the safe out. I hope they throw the safe out. Because if not, I knew I was going to have to take that 7 with a 5. And, and that's a lot, you feel me? Like, to be away from my kids. I'm not, like, some niggas might not care, but I care, you feel me? Like, my kids is my world. So I'm in there. I'm in the courtroom. My lawyer walks in. He goes, Ortiz, let me talk to you outside. He takes me outside. And while he took me outside, he was like, he was like, we did it. So I'm looking at him, I, and, and it was like hitting me like, okay, we did, we did it. I feel like I know what you're talking about, but elaborate. So he like, we did it. We got the safe thrown out. You was right. They was, they didn't belong in there. They didn't make no calls. And not to mention, they tried to lie and say they took your key off this, off your key ring to open the safe. But they showed a picture to the judge, and the judge was like, the door is clearly broken open. You guys clearly went into this, and I never signed off on this. But when he said it, that we did it. The only thing that jumped in my mind, it was like the most surreal feeling. It was like, like all types of emotion. It was happiness. It was, it was happiness and sadness at the same time because my kids flashed in front of my eyes. My wife flashed in front of my eyes, my daughter's mom. And to just, I just wanted to be able to grab all three of them and just hug them and celebrate together. And I knew that like, I was never gonna be away from them. And if I still have to go in, it won't be for no long ass time that it would really fucking matter. It felt like I was hitting the fucking lottery. My family's not all whole and it's, it's gonna bother me to the max. But at the same time, like I had to be forced myself to be somewhat happy that this happened. You feel me? Cause that's what I need is to get them out. That's still my dream. Still in trying my fighting my hardest to get into that truck driving school. And I'm gonna fight my hardest to get that truck so I can own my own, start my own company with it. You feel me? And this shit ain't for life. You're not supposed to be here hustling forever. This shit, I see 40 year old niggas out here still trying to bust moves cause they fresh out of jail. Like nigga, give up bro. At one point you need to give up. And I like, they took all the fight out of me. Me not being with my wife takes all the fight out of me. I just wanna, I just wanna be home with my kids, I, and forever. You feel me? I just wanna do what I gotta do to get home, and just make sure we. I work every day towards our future. You feel me? In this game, and in life, time is literally running out every single day. You feel me? Action right here represents the good die young. It says, "Rest in peace, Fred Dirt, my boy. He was killed when." Uh, I lost so many friends, my nigga, it don't even make sense, man. Here go Dave right here, you feel me? That story I was telling about his girl over the casket, bro, that's when I decided, man, there was, there was no more playing out here. We got my boy Dirt. This is the first boy I lost. This is the one that was on my stomach. That's him right here. That's my boy Dirt right there. You feel me? He got killed. His murder still ain't solved. Still to this day ain't solved. My boy Nene. This one was a tough story too. You feel me? Like like I held his head up while he was like slipping away. They was somebody else was doing mouth to mouth. I'm holding his head. I'm like, think about your kids, bro. Come on, we need you here. Think about your kids, bro. Think about your kids. Wake up, bro. Smacking them, pouring water on him, all that shit, bro. Who else? This Marielle's brother. He got killed over a girl, actually, which is a real bad story. You feel me? Like that shit should never go on. But yeah, his name was Pete and shit. That's him holding my daughter. You feel me? And people used to talk shit and, and like we, we had our differences at one point when we first started, but at the end of the day, we lived together. I lived in my baby mom's house. You feel me? I lived with him. I even had messages still from him telling me, yo, what we doing for my birthday? Let's go to the strip club. We got close as hell before he was, before he was killed. Recently, my aunt, she passed away from cancer and because of my big heart, you know what I'm saying? I took care of her like the last two months of her living. You know what I'm saying? I never left her side. And when she became, like, she, she got to a point where she couldn't respond to us, she couldn't do nothing. I didn't leave. I didn't shower. I didn't do none of that. I didn't care about money. I didn't care about nothing. I just wanted to make sure that I made her last time on this earth a good one. 
whenever, whenever she wanted to get out, and I would walk in, she'd be like, Alex, get me out of this house. And I'd be like, come on, Titi, we out of here. We're not leaving you to just sit here, rot on a, at a TV while you're waiting to die. Over here, this is like the family all. It's my son's name, my son right here, my daughter on this side, and to split them, it says, what I fight for, because I never lost sight of this, this is what I was fighting for. So what's up with you? What you did in school today? Nothing really. We had our first band over Bike life. That's all you know. You know what I'm saying? My son is my absolute best friend. The best thing about having a son is he's he's your image as a man. So you want to teach him how to be a man. I don't buy nothing if my kids can't have it. If I can't give it to my kids, I will not give it to myself. Daddy's dirt bike, Aiden got a dirt bike. Daddy got a street bike, Aiden got a street bike. Here's this little street bike right here. <laughs> and since my princess ain't big enough yet, she got the... You might have to come in. She got the Audi A8 joint, you know what I'm saying? Well, he's always not angry at me whenever I do something wrong. He'll tell me how to fix it or how to not have that happen again. And we're always messing around. We're always like play fighting. We're always doing stuff. And most of the time when we're at Chuck E. Cheese, he'll play, he'll play the games with me. <laughs> and then we'll always race each other. Um, when we're at places, not on our bikes because he has a bigger bike so he's faster. And we're always competing at everything. I didn't even start this. My son started this bike life shit. He kept wanting to ride, wanting to ride, because his, uh, his stepdad, he, he had a little four-wheeler, and he would, like, take him out on it. You feel me? He was, he treated my son, like, when I was locked up, he's the one who taught my son how to ride a bike. You feel me? I got to miss that. And, and when I'm home, it hurt, because when I'm home, I make sure I don't miss nothing. You feel me? I don't miss none of that shit. Like, I'm always on top of them. I'm at the school plays. I'm at the dances. I'm at all that shit. Anything that involves their school, back to school night I just came from, anything that involves their schooling or their extracurricular activities, I'm all in it. You feel me? I got videos for days of me and my son riding the bikes. I got videos for days of me and my daughter playing. Or, you know what I'm saying? They don't let us in dance school, though. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they don't let us watch them train and shit like that, which I'm a little upset about, but... It says my birth year, and it says throughout hardship and happiness since day one. Milton Ortiz, you feel me? That's my dad's name. And then when I want to play soccer, he'll want me to play soccer. He'll buy the soccer equipment. When I want to skateboard, he'll buy the skateboard equipment. When I want to box, because I grew up boxing. I boxed for years, you know what I'm saying? When I want to box, guess who was my trainer? He was my trainer, you feel me? When I wanted to learn about anything, he was there. My daughter's mom had this made for me. It's supposed to look like a present. Got pictures of me. She made this for, ha for Father's Day. See me, my son. When you open it, it's got more pictures of me with my daughter, best dad, me with my son. Plus at Sesame Place. Us being a family. This was us last last October, you feel me? At a hayride. That picture means the world to me. My birthday is tomorrow, bro, and I can't even like be happy because we're not whole. But they did this is this this box right here is literally my heart right here. This shit means the fucking world to me. No 
place I'd rather be. Daddy will literally give his kids the shirt off his back so they can wipe their butt, yep. Because my little Emily is crazy. And then this is my niece right here. This is who my daughter's named after. My niece, she died when she was a month old. And when she was born, she was born 030303. The newspaper that came out that day, it had stars and, and fireworks on it. It says, is today your lucky day? You feel me? And then it's supposed to represent her watching over my son because my son was born after her, you feel me? And then... Right here is a guardian angel. Then to split them, it says, death brings new life. Pardon the road rash from that bike life, you know what I'm saying? I'm going like two miles an hour and picked it up. It came up violently, you feel me? So when it came up, I went this, hit the back brake, my foot slid back just enough to not be hitting it. So I'm like this, like stomping on the fucking peg. And 12, that bitch. <laughs> my son's 10 years old. He know how to drive a car already, you feel me? I taught him how to drive a car. Worst case scenario, if this 10 year old needs to drive for some reason, something happened to me or something happened to anybody, he gonna get behind that wheel and he knows what he's doing, you feel me? I teach my kids everything, everything, everything. Ten years old, baby. In case of an emergency, daddy have a heart attack, my 10 year old can drive me to the hospital. Go ahead, reverse. Like I said, man, it don't get realer than me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was raised properly, I was raised to be loving to be caring. I came from a loving, caring family. Like, and anybody that that I brought around, that anyone brought around, they brought in their family now, you feel me? Like, everybody's family. Like, my boy Vinny, family. Uh, if, if, if you ain't doing it for your family, you don't really deserve anything good in life. If you got a whole family behind you or a family that you're supposed to be out there doing it for and you just out there trying to live like you live in a rap video, it's no point in living no more, man. Like, you're, you're the one who deserves to be in jail, you feel me? Leaving kids, running around, you ain't doing shit for them, none of that, man. I just, I just want to thank God every day for the family that, that raised me. Live life for the rest of my life and leave the, leave the street shit alone. Because that wasn't, that wasn't a lifestyle, that was... That was me trying to survive, me making sure I could take care of them. And now it's to time to move on to the next chapter, you know what I'm saying? When you move on to the next chapter, you, you can't involve it. I can't keep going back and forth to jail, or I can't, you know what I'm saying, end up dead on these streets because I got these two that I need to come home to every night. At the end of the day, my family would have never approved of this, but my family has taught me and and taught me the value of life and the value of family. And I would love to just apologize to them at the same time, but I ain't have no choice. I had nobody would hire me. There was nothing more I could do. You know what I'm saying? I was lost. I didn't know what to do. And I was too stubborn to ask for help. I could never bring myself to just ask like, oh, can I get this? Can I get that? Because I know myself, if I turn away, if I get turned away, I'm gonna be upset. I mean, I don't want to be upset with anybody, so I just be like, you know what? I'm gonna find a way, I'm gonna figure it out, I'm gonna go and get it however I can get it to make sure I was taken care of, to make sure my kids were taken care of. You know?